Damn, the things that are in your mind. It's like looking in the ninth circle of hell. Pretty disturbing shit, huh? This is some like weird black site porn type stuff. <laughs> I told you it wasn't pretty inside my head. You, you didn't like that kind of stuff? You didn't believe me. Now you now do, don't you? Wow, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm never gonna, we, I hope somebody can erase my line because that, that's horrible. <laughs> Told you, you should never have entered this brain, guys. Never, never in a million it's like, years. It's like that movie, In the Mind of Madness. Yes, Smoking yes. Looking in your mind will drive somebody mad. Literally. Uh, guys, welcome everybody to a brand new movie review where we talk about X-Men, Dark Phoenix. And oh, we kind of knew this was going to happen eventually, uh, especially after the last movie. Okay, so... um. The X-Men franchise is a very special franchise, dare I say, because... Very long franchise. Because I got all of the movies right here. I got all the current ones. I got all of the movies right here. Oh, Lord. So, let's see. Then you got... How it started. X-Men. Yep. Good movie. Great yeah. movie, right? It was good for its time. It was yeah. good for its time. 2000. Good, good movie. You also have, right here, you have... Yeah. X2. You don't like X2? X2 was okay in some parts, but... I think X2 is one of the better, like, X... Well, one of the better superhero sequels, I think. I think it's really a solid See, sequel. Yeah, the main problem I had that was that they should have just made a better... The bad guy was kind of blandish in my part. I liked it. Um, you also have... Ugh. X-Men Last Stand. One of the ones I don't like that much. I See, I like X-Men Last Stand. I think it's pretty good. True, Truth be told, I think it's pretty good. I do. You know, you're one of the few. <laughs> Apparently, I'm I'm in the minority, guys. Um, you also have here. You have X Men First Class. Yeah, which I thought was a great way to show the younger versions of themselves. I thought it was really good. I really liked it a lot. Introduced us to the the younger versions. You got Fastbender. You got McAvoy. You got Jennifer Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Really good Nicholas there. Nicholas Holt. Nicholas Holt. You got them all, man. Also, we have X-Men Days of Future Past yeah. right here. Actually, really great movie. I think this is, is a really strong sequel to First Class. Yeah. I really do. You bring the old school with the new school, I, I, yeah, I thought I it worked. I was wondering how they were going to tie it all together. I mean, I, I personally never really saw the entire Rogue cut, but... Yeah. The, but it's really great. A extra stuff with Rogue. I thought they did a really great job with that. Overall, it's a good movie. Then don't forget it gives you the whole timeline change too. Well, yes, which I think, which I think, uh, we'll talk about timeline changes definitely in this. And then you also have X Men Apocalypse. I mean, a lot of people hate on this movie. I didn't think it was that bad. It's not great. I think it's kind of lackluster a little I bit. I thought the main thing was in the cartoons and the comics. Apocalypse is such a larger than life villain he's huge he's almost impossible to stop yet i understand in this one if you've seen it and you have it gene gray goes full phoenix on his ass and yes which we'll get into this is kind of contradicting about the movie we're about to talk to yes and with all that being said now mind you i don't i don't own x-men origins wolverine thank god uh, can you blame me guys uh, but at least, at least Deadpool corrected that mistake. Yes, at least, at least that Deadpool did. Thank God. I was um, waiting for Colossus and and Megasonic to come out in this for movie. something. I'm telling you. Uh, so yes, now we finally get X Men: Dark Phoenix. Now, mind you, this movie was delayed about two times mm. before we ever came to the theaters. Um, now with the Fox merger happening and yeah. and Disney now o owning this property. they wanted to make it from like rated R to PG-13 type movies. And... and But also the idea that this is really the last film in the whole X-Men franchise before it gets rebooted. Yeah, um, just give that time. I mean, honestly, in my opinion, for the younger versions of yeah. these characters, I think they did a pretty good job for recasting. Uh, yes, I, I'm very curious to see where it goes in the future, but 
that being said, uh, where do you want to start with X Men Dark Phoenix? Oh, uh, it's just tell. I mean, you mostly know. Most everybody knows who's going to be in this film. Yeah. Some, I mean, the only new person you really get is Jessica Chastain's character, and yes, and pretty much timeline. Timeline. See, the main beginning part that I had problem with this was the timeline. Because the first one, the first class was what in seventies? No, it was in the sixties. Sixties. Days then of Future Past was in the 70s. And the next one was in the 80s. the 80s. And this one's in the 90s. In, in the 90s. And it makes me wonder, because in the last one you get introduced to Gene and Scott and all of them. Yes. It's like, they're like teenagers, probably like mid to almost, I wouldn't say late teens, but somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And they're about 17, 18-ish. And you get to see all these other characters like Nightcrawler and all them, Quicksilver. Yeah. And then in the next movie, you see a little bit older versions of this. Like, how old, how much more older are they? Because they got to be in their mid 20s. I mean, mind you, it's kind of hard to make the actors look a little bit older without CGI and shit. And these ones look like they look like they're almost the same age, basically. And there's like, I, they're doing all adult shit now. I mean, what kind of fountain of youth are, are these people <laughs> drinking from? Because, because Fastbender. And McAvoy don't look like they've and, aged at all since the and, first one. And Holt and everybody. Hell, even Lawrence's character. Lawrence's character. They well, I have, understand her character because she ages slower. But. I get it, but those other people, my God, you man, should see at least a little bit of aging. You know, some wrinkles and stuff. But. Literally, like how do like this takes place in '92? How do you get from I from from too. them? To where Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart are in in the year two thousand when they they made the first goddamn must, they must have had a X Men movie. How like, they probably had a poor healthcare system. That's why they How? ate so much. Oh my god! Like, well, like, don't forget they readjusted the movie so that these people age slower. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, my healthcare isn't that great, but don't fucking forget, Christ, they are mutants. They have the X Men healthcare system. God bless them. Jesus <laughs> Christmas. And, I and, mean, oh my good God. Lord. Good man. Um, you know, I will say this much. I, some of the actors do a really good job yeah. here, and others I felt weren't really... I wasn't feeling it. Well, I mean, let's just say... I mean, like, certain characters, I won't say who, because I don't want to spoil the movie. Fair enough. It's just some characters, like, what was almost the point of them? They were barely in the movie. There are certain characters, and again, we won't spoil anything, but I will say there are certain characters like Mystique, where you're like, what's the point? She was um, in maybe 20 minutes. Maybe 20 minutes, and that's being generous. Quicksilver, about the same. About the same. And I just want to say something about Jennifer Lawrence, man, because... For some, for for some reason, you know, she was really great in X Men First Class, mm -hmm. and I thought she was really good in Days of Future Past. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, thought she was lagging a little bit in Apocalypse. I felt like it almost like she didn't care in Apocalypse, and now here it's almost like she could really care less. It's almost yeah. Just put me in it a little bit. Fine, whatever. I mean, in the first two, she, you know, she had such an emotional impact on the main characters. Man. This one, it felt like, felt like she was like the, and like oh, in the first two or the, like man. the second one, she was like the mother of the group. Yes. And after that, I felt like she aged to like the grandmother in this one. She's like, and good goodbye, dearie. You know, this is the end of my game. Oh, I thought you were gonna pinch my cheeks back, little boy. Damn him. Do you want a silver dollar? <laughs> Oh, no, but, I mean, you do see some of the relationships change in this movie. They've actually gotten more mature. Like, you see that Tank and her have actually evolved to a romantic type thing going on. Yeah, you, you got some blue-on-blue -blue action happening. I mean, <laughs> there you get to see. I mean, obviously, you know, of course, Jot, uh, Scott and Jean, you know, you always knew that was going to happen. Let me tell you something. If he is not tapping that, then there's a problem. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm know, just throwing it out there. It's you, so hard you to pick between. You don't have to agree Blanca with me. Blanca and Sophie, you know, both playing the Phoenix. I mean, they're both extremely hot. You don't have to agree with it. Hell, even Blanca and her, you know, she's a lot older now, but she's still a fox. Jesus. Um, let me ask you this: What did you think of the makeup effects? Because with which is there a particular one? Yes, or? Mystique. Mystique. It felt like she, I mean, in the first one, she felt more, like, the it was first more, two, she was more, like, reptilian in a little bit. A little more ways. blue? Yeah, like, more like a, like a tiger-ish type thing. 
but it just felt like they just painted her face and just let yeah, they put set. a little dots on her on her forehead and said, yeah, here, like. Like, it's almost like Jennifer Lawrence said, hey, if I'm going to be in this, yeah, I don't want to do the full, like, makeup stuff. I mean, yeah, sorry, guys. At least I like... The one thing I did like is that they made the Beast look more... I mean, I didn't care for when they did it in first class when they made him look like a tiger or something. Yeah, they kind Give him more humanish features they, in the sequels. I mean, I don't mind it a little bit. I just had a problem with it. It just looked very amateurish, and it looked kind of bad to me. Yeah. And I felt like it could have been done a little bit better. I mean, uh, the only other looks I could say were... I mean, they were the only mutant mutants, you know, that looked... You know, yeah. not like a regular person. I, I mean... I mean, I thought Beast looked fine. I thought Beast there, looked good. I think there were the only two mutants in there that looked uh, mutinish. Mutinish. There was there was a couple people that maybe their eyes were a little bit different or something. Or that but, one, there was that one scene where they're talking to the younger kids and the one that had like something with the veins in his face. But they didn't really like have anything that to like. It, it almost felt like the budget was low that they couldn't really invest in any like yeah. makeup effects or anything like big and sprawling I and mean, spectacular. Apparently they probably only take in the regular looking mutants. They probably leave the non looking mutants underground like with the well, mutants. Well can't say I blame them but yeah I mean. Are you geez. a mutinist? <laughs> I had to say it. Um, but, I, no, I mean, there's a lot in this movie, which I we can talk about in this movie. It's just like the beginning with Xavier. Yes, well, my see, the, the whole Xavier thing, it, 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 it happened in the first three movies, where Xavier was protecting Gene mm -hmm. and was blocking things out. Mm -hmm. And this is the same way here, but it's a little it's bit... It's a minor twist. It's a minor twist to it. And the idea that, of course, they go into space and they're, they're helping... An accident. They're helping some astronauts. And, of course, this giant energy force comes flying toward the ship. Now, you said that there's a contradiction from Apocalypse to this. Yeah, because in the Apocalypse one, she's always had the power within her. It's just, it's just starting to emerge. Yes. And, you know, she unleashed a full phoenix on him. In this one, this energy force apparently, I don't know, somehow senses her strength that she might be strong enough to contain it. Yeah. It enters inside of her, then she grows, like, super powerful. Yeah, it, it for some reason I don't understand that. Like again, like is it just her own powers and it's just magnifying what? what... That's what I think it was because the way that they're explaining it in the film, I think it was just an ampli amplification of her current abilities. It, it really didn't make a lot of in the, sense in the comics. To me, she's like literally the one of the most powerful mutants. Without even without the Phoenix Force, she's like almost. I think she's a level five mutant. That's like the highest there is. I think she's something like that. It's it's. I mean, she. It, to me, it just didn't quite work the way I wanted it to work. I, yeah. I think. And outside of outside of that, I, I thought the. I thought the plot was just really bland, man. I just did. Well, I mean, when you get the Chastain character, you find out she's a being. I mean, for, if you want, look at the comics, there's always a thing with aliens when it comes connected to the Phoenix. Yes. And this, they did the same thing, but the aliens were just like, they have abilities of their own. They're like all natural shapeshifters. Yeah. They have some like minor telekinetic abilities. And yeah. They're resistant to telepathy, but other than that, I mean, there's they really didn't do anything. There's a lot of cool, there's a lot of cool ideas in this movie, mm -hmm. but for some reason, it feels very bland and it doesn't feel very put together very, I very think, well. I think the main thing that wor didn't work for me was the Chastain character, the, no. main, the main alien. She's just like, like, We're gonna teach you how to nurture your power. I'm like, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. She wasn't menacing. I all she did was like. Yeah, that's it. Like, and the problem that I that I have is, that, and it was the same problem with with X Men Apocalypse, is like when the villain is weak sauce, then I d <laughs> then weak sauce. when it's weak sauce, I can't. Well, at least with Apocalypse, he had quite a few abilities of own. He had healing. He had he, he can manipulate people's powers, amplify yes, them. I mean, you know, every time he got into a new mutant, he had a new power. I mean, there's something, there's something good there with Apocalypse. I felt it was kind of a misfire, though, with this. I felt he was too weak in that one. Yes, whereas this, I mean, you have the the Dark Phoenix there, which is which is very powerful. Literally one of the most they, powerful ones, 
besides Apocalypse in the entire series. But they didn't really do much with it. You have Jessica Chastain's character who's trying to be the big bat, but feels very yeah, bland. She's trying and, to be the faux phoenix. But it doesn't really work. Um, yeah, I just... To, to, I, you know what I think the main thing is? What? Is the point of... This is probably... Can you say the whole point of the movie is... Sure. That the, what Xavier says in the beginning about power, yeah. it can tip either in the right direction or the wrong direction. In a lot of ways, Xavier, he let all the power go to his head. Yes, and I think this movie is just as much about Xavier as it is about actually the Dark Phoenix itself, is the idea that he's he's thinking, oh my God, I'm getting awards from the president, I'm, I'm getting all this attention. Uh, this is great, and yeah, you know, it's good that we're helping people too, you know, you know whatever. It's right. Even uh, Raven, aka Mystique, says it's like you're just inflating your own ego. Exactly. And she, and she she's known that they're going to pay the price eventually, which happens in this film. Which happens in this film, but 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 was there was there the emotional stakes that I wanted? No. no, I felt that the emotion was really flat, especially for something that felt like it was building up film after film. I, mean, I felt like it was kind of bland to me. The only people, only person I could say you could see feel kind of a little bit of emotion for. And even though they didn't do, I mean, I'm not minding the actors, I'm saying in the movie itself. Yeah. Is uh, Nicholas Holt playing Beast, you know, and after he goes through what he goes through in this movie, I mean, you kind of feel for him. And then yeah. you get the thing with Magneto, and you find out he's trying to, you know, he's trying to live a good life now. He's trying he to, you know, he gets pulled back into all this crap. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. I think there are certain elements that really work here, but if you're trying to feel them, the emotion that they're trying to give, I, I think it's failing big time, man. Failing yeah. big time. So along with all of the other issues that we've had so far, um, add the action onto that list as yeah. well, because I don't know about you, ma'am, but to me, I thought the action was really lackluster, dude. I felt like like the third matrix when they're doing that final fight scene oh my god yeah holy shit where it's supposed to be exciting but you're just sitting there like i feel nothing the only for this people that did an exciting fight scene in the like near the last acts was magneto yeah um i forget the name cody something the one that plays oh uh, cody smith mcfee yep him I think that was pretty much it. I mean, maybe the girl that's with Magneto, I forget the actress's name. To me, maybe maybe you agree with me, maybe not. But a lot of these actors, I feel like they've almost felt like they've given up on on, on it. It felt like they're oh, yeah, like... I realize this is the third film in the younger series. And well, it's yeah. actually the the fourth. The fourth, fourth I Fourth, mean. I mean, actually. But it's kind of hard. I mean, with all the stuff that they went through to make this movie, it's kind of hard to do like, oh, we can't do a high-budget fight scene like we do in the previous film. If It just felt like they didn't have the budget for it. Not only did they not have the... Or if they did have the budget, they they wasted it in my opinion because again like it felt very small it felt very confined it didn't feel very exciting to me yeah. I you know I mean there's a couple of moments where I wanted to feel something and it didn't I like I said I felt more I felt more excitement and more tense thrills in X-Men the last stand the yeah. the fight stuff and I just well, didn't... I mean they were fighting against the whole freaking army of mutants and well, no, I mean, and... there's in that there's a scene in this movie, well, a whole like action set piece with like her um, uh, Jean going to her father's house, yeah, right. Oh, she... that's giant fight scene between her and the X Men. Yes. Now there's the scene in X Men: The Last Stand where like she's uh, the uh, a whole fight scene in like a kitchen and the whole like street area. If yeah. you compare the two, X Men: The Last Stand is far more exciting than uh, than this one. Well, I mean, the problem more, with man. this one was, I mean, they're trying to you know they're trying to subdue Jean in this one. I mean, even with here's the part that I really kills me is yeah. when Quicksilver tries to take her down. Yes. Somehow she anticipates it, even in super speed time, and she instantly takes his ass down. I'm like, Instantly, how did that happen? I mean, but we've seen that before in X Men Apocalypse. It's nothing. It's nothing new. It's nothing interesting. And 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 even Quicksilver didn't even get any big like moment or anything the only thing either. He, big thing he did other than try to subdue Jean with the thing with the space shuttle. Even then, it was like a wonder. Yeah, that's it. Like again, like I felt the action was really lame in this one a lot. Mm -hmm. And it just there's a lot of unaddressed oh. issues just for him. You never clarify. Oh. 
Hey, hey Magneto, guess what? Um, I'm your kid. You never even got that. Exa oh, you're right about that. We never even got that either, Maybe he man. he just doesn't care at this point anymore. Maybe he doesn't, but that never even ha I mean, of course, they're not really together by that point in, in the actual I story. Mean, they I don't mean, even connect at all in this film. That, that is true. They That that got completely forgotten you know, as well. another God. thing that I talked to with John, I thought it was uh, under waste, yeah. was the whole... Magneto Genosha Island thing. It was we. It was yes. like They almost did nothing with it. There, it, that's it's that real cool thing uh, from the comic books, yeah. which is. I mean, their island was sort of primitive-ish. -ish, you know, they did had some technology, but other than that, they didn't really do anything with this movie. There was really there was so there were so many opportunities here for something cool, and it it really failed, man. In a lot of ways. I mean, I mean, and on top of the inconsistencies, which let's be honest. The, the X-Men franchise has a shitload of inconsistencies. Mm. This ain't no, nothing new, man. I mean, the thing I could only say I liked about the Phoenix part was other than seeing, like, the giant, you know, energy thing coming before he absorbs in the gene was mm. you could see the, like, the physical changes on her flesh. You know, you could see yeah. little, you know, energy lines on her face. And even her eyes change a little bit. I didn't care for the original Last Stand version. Okay. All it made her look, like, ghoulish, you know. Yeah, it made her look like, which I was fine with. I like that they did something di different with it and not the same thing. Because my problem is, if you're going to do the, the Phoenix Saga, you really need to do it in... Like in, in the original form. Well, not only that, but you need to do it in more than one film. Because, mm -hmm. to me, you're really truncating well, the story. Well, they hinted at the last one. You get the, like, good... Sh you, get, you get to see a bit at the end, but you don't get to see the full force of what you could do. My problem is, if you really think of this in, like, a narrative sense, we just met Gene in the last movie. You're going from just yeah. meeting a character to going full-on to the Phoenix Saga. That's a big jump, dude. You That's need at least another jump. movie or two. You, I mean, I would if you're going to do the 90s, do the Morlock storyline. That would have been cool. Maybe that finding been, a way that she unlocks her power even more. It would have been something to just sort of, sort of give us a little bit more time with the characters or something, man. Do something a little. I mean, yeah. I heard they were going to do hints in this movie. They were going to do the whole... Lelandra, you know, the alien, space alien queen, you know, love interest for Charles and the whole Emkron, yeah. Kirstow and all that stuff. I'm like, because that connects with the Phoenix. Yeah, but... But in this one, they didn't even bother with that. They just did some cheap version of, like, zombie aliens. You know, they're like... I... <laughs> I, I will admit this, man. I, you know, there was a lot of changes that had to be made to build with this film. In fact, the whole third act had to be changed because um, it was, from what the reports say, that it was so similar to Captain Marvel mm -hmm. that they had to change it. Which I would love to see what that original third act would have been. I believe they probably would have went much more in space. Yeah. But to me... You know, when they changed it, I don't think maybe they changed it for the better because it, yeah. it just didn't work, man. Well, I think another thing that I felt was kind of weird was, like, compared to the last two films, three films, actually. Yeah. You know, mutants have been trying to stay hidden, you know, you know, like, oh, they're, we're not out there, but we, you know we're out there. And it's like in this one, Charles, like we said earlier, Charles' powers are going to his head. He's got, like, oh, I got a direct line to the president. He's got, like, his own version of the bat phone. <laughs> I mean, it, it's yeah. like seeing the president's office got a giant X on there. It's like, yeah. after everything starts to go wrong, it's like, sorry, Mr. Xavier, but the president's not going to be taking your call anymore. I'm like, see how quickly they turn after you, like, one incident? Man, that shit turns like a dime, baby. Fuck, man. And like, he, his head was so far up the president's ass. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was oh my it's god, like, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for helping us with mutant rights. Oh, wait, bad incident? Put the cuffs on him. I mean, shit, hell, they fuck up on one incident, and the next minute, you know, after they get their butts beaten, the fucking, you know, the government teams out there to snatch their asses. Exactly. I mean, to me... Got way to build the trust. I, like, for me, I'm not gonna lie, man. I literally, I... I just felt like everybody was lacking in this film. Magneto was lacking. Yeah. Xavier was lacking. I mean, the only thing I can say he did well, the Magneto thing, was when he was trying to fight Jean. You see yes. the strain that's like, he's going full force power on her. Sure, there is he, a full force and there. And he can't even keep up with her. She's that strong now. I mean, I like that. I just felt like it, it was just lacking in a lot of areas. I mean, 
what is your final thoughts and grade rating on well, Dark it's Phoenix? Like the, when the movie ends, you know, you get that final, like, oh, glimpse of hope, possibly another movie. Which we'll never get, by, by the yeah. way. I'm like... Where can they go from here after the events of this movie? I'm like, everything has changed now. Everything is completely different from the original series. Well, they're re re rebooting it probably in about 10 years' time. Probably. So, so there, there you go. That, that's where they're going. But. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll get an older Fassbender, McAvoy, if they you know, still want to do the contracts. <sighs> Something like that. But uh, That's another thing you pointed out earlier. What? The age difference from the original X Men with Xavier in the year 2000, then you got these versions that are only like 10 years behind. I mean, like, they, they must have had a bad healthcare system. They went off they, the wagon big time. Let's just put it that way. With the oh, wagon. And that needle, he probably drinks when he's alone. So that's how he aged into Ian McKellen. And Charles Xavier, and like, yeah, the, the, the booze. He probably just let all the stress get to him. Good lord, man. Uh, this this movie really needed Wolverine, dude. It really needed something I to really excite. I told you what the problem me. I thought about the I Wolverine because the actor, I mean Hugh Jackman compared to Sophie Turner, she, she's young enough to be his daughter in real life. So. I know it'd be a little fucked up, but like, you know, oh, Wolverine, I'm so young, but you're so old. She doesn't want those old hairy balls. It's, I mean, Wolverine can be be the new. The new Hefner. Well, don't man. forget, you know, the, they got a new the, Wolverine coming out actor for that one. Well, eventually they're going to do that. Eventually, maybe him and be... Sophie Turner can, you know, hook up in another movie. I mean, I mean, look, she she's fucking dating a Jonas brother, so I, Not I mean, dating, she's married. To a okay, Jonas fuck brother. it, she's married to a day to, to a Jonas brother. She's so, got good taste. Oh, that's true. Um, so what is your your grade rating for, for the sucker show? Sure? Like I said, the only, there are only a few things I liked in this film, like the action scenes with Nightcrawler, and even the cool bit that Magneto do near the end. Yeah. I mean, the, in terms of the emotional stuff, it just felt, felt almost like, I can understand if Xavier went like evil or dark or something. Yeah. Because they do do that in the comics, he does like an evil version of himself. Would you be cool? I mean, even his evil version still no power, still no match for the Phoenix. Yeah. But it felt like the Phoenix. I mean, I felt the Phoenix was a. It's hard to say because both versions I thought were pretty dull and bad. Yeah. But the only thing I liked about this version is you could see like the little flames like coming out of her skin. That is cool. I do admit, I, I do but like that. But it makes a lot. you wonder how. I mean, how much power does this Phoenix have compared to the original one? You know? Again, man, it's if it's she's just... that powerful, there's no mutant team alive that's gonna be able to take her down. That's the thing, dude. Even the aliens were getting their asses kicked. You don't know. But I mean, even the emotional stuff, like with Gene and Scott, and you know Hank and Mystique, it just, that, that felt flat, dude. The whole, whole Mystique felt thing, it felt forced. It did. It really did. It did feel, the whole feel Gene forced. Gene and Scott thing. It didn't, you know. I mean, they had emotion, but it was just so weak. You barely feel it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I do. I mean, even when you get the whole Xavier final thing, it's like, realizes what he's done. He's finally realizes his ego's gotten to the point where he's become the problem. I thought that was a good, sort of a good thing. Yeah. It shows you how he made out that comment in the beginning of the movie about power corrupting somebody. I mean, there were some good things, but it just, it didn't come It together, wasn't enough man. to push the movie into a good category. No, it was just it like, wasn't. like either middle deadline or it's starting to go bad. I agree. But, I will say this, I still thought it was somewhat better than Last Stand, which a lot of people disagree with me. This one, of course. I mean, of course he's wrong. But, uh, I thought it was better than Origins. Origins. Oh, God, yes. Origins oh, God. Origins for me, not the Hugh, not Hugh Jackman. No, nope, not, not, not you. That movie was beyond horrible. Yeah, so this I'm is... I'm sorry he had to go through that pain. Yeah, so this is better than that, but it still is probably on the way lower end. If I had to put the younger series first, I'd have to say... It's tough for First Class and Futures Past, because I thought they were both pretty good. They have to be almost tied for me. And then yeah. The third one would be Apocalypse, and then probably this one. Yeah, this is on, on the way... Dead, dead, I dead, wish they had ended dead. it a better way, but you got what you got. Yeah. But overall, I thought this movie could have been a lot better. You know, give it probably. I'd have to go for if it wasn't for some parts in it, I'd this movie be a complete F. But I have to say this is probably like a, probably a low C minus. Low C minus. Okay. I'm um, trying to be fair. I, I like the X Men series. I, you I like know, the younger class. I like the X-Men series, dude. I really honestly do. And 
I First Class is brilliant. I, Days of Future Past really is a great film. X Men Apocalypse fell off the wagon a lot mm -hmm. to me. There were still a lot of good things in it, but this movie really had the potential to be like, okay, this is a great comeback thing. Mm -hmm. You knew this was going to be the last one because of Disney obviously now owning it, and they're not going to continue with this iteration of the characters. Um, I mean, it isn't the end of mutant movies. So. No, it's not, but it's, it's the end of these of these characters here, for yeah. sure. For me, I'm not going to lie, man, I... I was just sitting there and I was feeling nothing. There was no emotion. There was no, I mean, maybe so I got a black you're heart. Main alien in this movie. Maybe I got a fucking black heart. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned. I know, half the time you look like the alien in the movie. She always looked like she was pissed off about something. She just didn't express the emotion. Well, I know. I mean, uh, to me, man. Maybe she had just a bad cup of coffee and just didn't come out yet. Maybe she just needed to take a shit and she couldn't because she's an alien and she just realized that it's all bottled up inside her. And... <laughs> or she probably just had a bad date in a very long time. I can never figure out alien anatomy, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no. Honestly, dude, I, I, I got more emotion out of Last Stand when Wolverine is trying to take out Jean Grey in order to save everybody. There was more emotion there. Here, there was nothing to really grasp onto. I thought that some actors really were giving it their all, and others just felt like, I'll just wave my hand around and fucking they'll do some, <laughs> something with it. I, To me, man, it really is lacking in a lot of ways. And for me, other than a couple of saving graces that you said, this is on the low end, and it's probably going to be, for uh, for me, a high D+. Plus. No, we're not too far off. We're not too far off, but this one is definitely la lacking, and um, it's thankfully, I think it's good that Disney has it now because they well, can I mean, finally it's hard it. When you get to that many movies in a series, especially for a newer series, yeah. it's hard to come up with good storylines. It is hard to come up with good storylines. And now, on to Reboot Central in about 10 years' time. Um, Makes me wonder where they're going to go there. Well I'll, well, I'll be the same age and we'll just be re re yeah. doing it. We'll look like Xavier and Magneto. You fancy a game of chess? With you, I beat the hell out of you. Come on. Which hand? <laughs> Bastard. Oh. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let oh. us know what you think of Dark Phoenix, guys. The whole X-Men series. Hopefully the X-Men series can rise out of the ashes like the Phoenix. Let's hope, guys. In the meantime, we will be back next time for another movie review. Take care, everybody. And, uh... Oh, I think I farted. What? Oh. Mind powers take it out of me. Apparently. Take care.